nations. I will tell of your name to my kin. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the feast day of the great missionary of the church, St. Augustine of Canterbury. He became the first Archbishop of Canterbury, which was a very important um, uh, leader within the Church of England. Um, he was the main missionary that went uh, to England to bring the gospel there. And he became the, the bishop, kind of like how um, St. Patrick is the one who went to Ireland. He's become kind of the key um, shepherd of Ireland. St. Augustine of Canterbury is that for England. So we can ask his intercession um, for, for us who are, um, you know, in many ways we come from that, um, that background of England or our country as well, um, being originally part of the 13 English colonies and then, and then breaking away to form the beginning of the United States of America. So a lot of our heritage does go back um, to, to that time as well. Um, but he is someone who had that courage and had that ability of how do I go into the culture of the Angles um, and to, to bring Christ there. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord of mercy, you came to call sinners. Christ of mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord of mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the preaching of the Bishop St. Augustine of Canterbury led the English peoples to the gospel, grant we pray that the fruits of his labors may remain ever abundant in your church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At Miletus, Paul spoke to the presbyters of the church of Ephesus. Keep watch over yourselves and over the whole flock, of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers, in which you tend the church of God, the acquired with his blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come among you, and they will not spare the flock. And from your own group, men will come forward, converting the truth, to draw the disciples away after them. So be vigilant, and remember that for three years, night and day, I unceasingly admonished each of you with tears. And now I commend you to God, and to that gracious word of his that can build you up and give you the inheritance among all who are consecrated. I have never wanted anyone silver or gold clothing. You know well that these very hands have served my needs and my companions. In every way, I have shown you that by hard work of that sort, we must help the weak and keep in mind the words of the Lord Jesus who said to, who himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down prayed with them all. They were all weeping loudly as they threw their arms around Paul and kissed him, for they were deeply distressed that he had said that they would never see his face again. Then they escorted him to the ship. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Show forth, O God, your power. 
the power, O oh God, with which you took our part. For your temple in Jerusalem, let the kings bring, bring you gifts. Sing to God, O oh kingdoms of the earth. You kingdoms of the earth, sing to God. Chant praise to the Lord, who rides on the heights of the ancient heavens. Behold, his voice resounds, the voice of power. Confess the power of God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Over Israel is his majesty. His power is in the skies. Awesome in his sanctuary is God, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Your word, O oh Lord, is true. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them. None of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world, so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world, any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world, and I consecrate myself for them, so that they may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord says here in this high priestly prayer of Jesus, this is the night before he was, the night in which he was betrayed. This is in the Last Supper. And he's praying this. And he's saying, as you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. Consecrated in the truth. So being set apart in the truth, to proclaim the truth, to live the truth, to share that. And I'd like to talk about sort of three different ways in which, even in ancient times, these were three different ways to win people's um, to win people's hearts, to win people over to your side when you're sharing. This is something that goes all the way back to Aristotle, to um, Plato. These are um, ancient philosophers that, that had wisdom, and the church saw that wisdom, someone like St. Thomas Aquinas, and then took it, and then was able to use it to say, we can see in their wisdom ways in which we need to bring the gospel into the world. And so what they would talk about is, um, Plato especially would talk about three different ways in which you can touch different aspects of a person's heart, or actually a person's being, and it can 
lead them to a deeper belief in, in what you have to say. And the three are logos, pathos, and ethos, or ethos. So they deal with different parts of the, of the person. Logos is the mind, pathos is the heart, which is the place of the emotions, and ethos is the gut, the, the appetites, the, the desire in a sense. So when we talk about logos, and why I say this is that Paul and, and Jesus, um, that, that Paul, when you see him preaching and living his life, he's using each one of these in different times. And, and this is something for us to look at, to say, which one am I called to use primarily to reach this particular person, this particular audience? Logos deals with sharing arguments that have evidence, that are well thought out, that are reasonable, giving an account of something, a defense of something, but doing it with charity and reverence. That's what St. Paul reminds us, saying, always be ready to give an account, a defense of the hope that is within you, but do it with gentleness and reverence. And St. Paul will do that many, many times, where he'll share about the reason why Christ coming changes everything or so, and why we don't need to follow the Mosaic Law right now. We don't need to refrain from eating pork or different things like that. He'll sort of bring, looking at scripture, looking at arguments to say, this is the reason why um, such and such is the case. So we need to be able to have that, to say when someone comes up to you, to say, why do you hold Mary in such a high place? Or sometimes they might, someone might say, why do you Catholics worship Mary? Now, if you use logos, you'd then be able to say, well, that's not actually the case. This is how we see Mary. This is why. Here's the evidence in scripture. Here's the evidence in tradition. Here's the evidence in, in common sense that you just reach out to your mother um, who's been given to you by, by Jesus himself. And that works on someone's mind which if they're open, they'll say, you know, that makes sense. And it might make them start thinking more and more. And maybe ultimately start seeing the truth of our faith. So that's logos. Pathos is the heart, the emotions. And that's why when we talk about pathology, it's a sickness in the emotions, a sickness in the heart. But pathos here means heart, means emotions. And this would be when someone is, is preaching, is talking, is maybe sharing stories, sharing um, narratives or things like that, and your heart is just moved. You hear an inspirational story of a soldier who is willing to give his life to save six of his comrades and you're able to see that, and there's something in your heart, it doesn't really just stay here. You don't just kind of think about it logically and say, oh yeah, that's nice, but it like hits you in the heart, and you're just like, I, I, I'm so like filled with just awe and wonder that someone would do something like that. So when we preach this way, it's showing, especially through the lives of saints, the awe and wonder of what God is capable of doing. Ethos, and this is what St. Paul is doing in this first or in this in the first reading today. Ethos, it deals again with the, the gut, and it's this it's not so much what you say, but it's whether what you say is connected to how you live. So that's why we call ethics or ethical ethos. It means action, doing. From the gut, we kind of do. From the heart, we, we feel. From the mind, we think, we know. But it's this last one that St. Paul is using here, saying, 
He's saying, there are going to be these enemies that are going to come. They're going to try to lead you away from the gospel. But the way that he wants to help them to be vigilant is to say, remember that for three years, I, I was with you. I was sharing with you. I was even crying because I, I wanted to share so much with you. He then goes on saying, I never wanted anyone silver or gold or clothing. He was able to work with his own hands. He didn't, he didn't mooch off of someone. He's using that as evidence of saying, trust what I have to say because of how I lived my life. That's super important. It wouldn't make any sense for someone, let's say, who is trying to serve the poor. Let's say a, a priest who's trying to serve the poor. Let's say Mother Teresa. If Mother Teresa went with a Ferrari into the streets of Calcutta, she gets out of the Ferrari and says, hey, I'm here to help. You know, there's sort of a disconnect that might be there. Or someone saying, don't, don't lie, or be honest, or integrity. And then you hear about their double life. And all of a sudden it's like, why would I want to listen to you if you're living this life? That sometimes when we have different celebrities that come crashing down, we sort of put our hope in them, and they turn out different. Maybe a savage wolf instead of the sheep that we thought, or the shepherd that we thought. So do you see how each one of those things corresponds to an aspect of our heart, of our mind, of our gut? And we need to learn how to use all three of them. And three of the, the popes who we've just had, including Pope Francis, you could look at each one of them as being really strong in one of them. They did all of them well, but being strong in one of them. Pope Benedict would have been the one that was strongest in the Logos. He was a master of distinctions, of giving just a logic sense to the faith. He's one of the most brilliant theologians that was there. St. John Paul II would have been the, the pathos, the heart, when he would preach, when he would talk about you are not the sum of your fears and failures, but rather the sum of your Father's love for you. It hit the heart, and young people would be like, so inspired to give their lives to the Lord. And Pope Francis, someone who talks about being a church for the poor, and the way that he lives that out in this way of even in the midst of a large crowd, he always is magnetized towards that person who is alone, who is in the periphery, who is sick. There's some very powerful moments in which he embraces them. And it's not a show, it's coming from the heart. And people are like, wow, that's my Pope. So they give this example, and it's an example for us as well. Are you allowing your mind to be fed so that you can give a defense intellectually of our faith? Do you know your faith? And what resources are you using to grow in that? Are you learning from the lives of the saints to be inspired and then to be able to share from that? And then are you living your life as if Christianity really did matter and your life is a visible reflection of that, whether you say it or not? Logos, pathos, ethos. Three ways of bringing the gospel, being sent into the world by Jesus Christ to bring the good news. And now let us stand and bring our petition to the for the Lord, for our Holy Church, may she be guided in truth through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government officials, may the grace of God enlighten their hearts for peace and justice in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel alienated, lonely, or cast off, and those for you for for those whose dignity is overlooked, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may be formed and transformed by 
the word and sacrament and be united ever more closely to the Trinity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may perpetual light shine upon them and may they rest in the eternal peace of Christ. We especially pray for the repose of the soul of Catherine Harmon, for whom I have been asked to offer this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions within Our Lady's intercessory box, and also for the grace of growing in these three ways of, of sharing the gospel through Logos, Pacos, and Ethos. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear and answer the prayers we offer today. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands that have become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer Almighty God on the feast day of Blessed Saint Augustine of Canterbury. May grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion may imitate what we now do through Christ our Lord.
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. History of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have called us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Richard our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, your spouse, with the blessed apostles of all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I truly believe that you are present in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Never let me be parted from you. Amen. Regina Cherry. 